Welcome to another RD Works Learning Lab. We're going to carry on where we left off last time by trying to measure the power this time that's passing through the lenses. Now we're not particularly worried about what the power is generated by the machine, um, how efficient that is. We're just looking at the power difference across the lens. So I'm going to use my little uh, my little meter here, my little power meter, and we've got the uh, we've got the program set up. It will start off with five seconds of dead time and then it will go for 20.5 seconds and expose this to the power coming out of the laser. We need to make a note of the start temperature that we can see on here. So I'll just turn that off for a minute and we start from square one. So everything's nice and clean. So we turn the meter on, let it settle, 22.4, 5, 4, 3, 5, 22.4 was called that. Now we'll press the max button and then we'll start the program. And that's gone up to, and it holds a maximum, so it's 54.5. So 54.5 minus 22.4 equals times 2 equals 64.2 watts. Okay, now we've got to cool this down now because it's uh, temperature's at 54. So we turn this back on again and we get it back down to about 22, which is where it started off. 22.7. Provided it's within about a degree or two, it won't really matter. It doesn't cause too much result distortion. Okay, and it's going up to 54.6. So that's 63 watts that time. It's 1.2 watts different. So already we've got variation before we even put the lens in. So we've got to understand what that variation is so that we can try and take it into account. Now you may ask why I've got that spiral pattern on there. Well, there are some machines where this doohickey is used where they can't open the lid like this and beat the safety system. So if they want to measure the power, they have to actually physically set the doohickey up in that position there, on a central position to start with. And then it runs around the pattern and does not leave the power in one particular place for any significant period of time. Now I'm not going to fiddle around with putting lenses in and out of lens tubes. I've already made a couple of little cheat devices that enable me to literally just drop a lens into a little holder and drop that holder into there. Okay so with the lens in we'll do exactly the same thing. Now bear in mind that the lens is now focusing down around about an inch and a half below here. So I've either got to be up high or low. And I'm going to choose to be up quite high so that I don't get maximum energy density trying to uh, engrave a line on here. Okay, so I'm going to keep this up quite close to the lens. By moving the dough hickey around I'm actually reducing the risk of damaging the surface yet even more and I'm also evening out the heat that goes into there. Here's how I'm carrying out my results so that you can see that I'm open and above board. I've got three tests here for the laser without the lens in and I've taken an average of three readings here okay and that's the average 63 watts. And then I've taken five results for the lens. 
I've discarded the max and the min and I've taken the three middle results and I've got 57.9 watts. Now when I divide one by the other I get 91.4%. So that's the strategy that I'm adopting for every lens. Right, we're just about to do the last test and it's on the gallium arsenide lens. Now what I'd like you to do is just take a quick look at how shiny the surface of that lens is and you would think that because it is so reflective it would bounce the rays off. Now this is acrylic. If there were any rays bouncing off there would be some marks on this acrylic. I see no sign of any marks at all. So we're just going to do the very last test. Starting temperature 24.4 Now the hiss you can hear is the air pump. I've got the air pump disconnected because um, it, I don't want any air assist up in here at all. I don't want anything to cool down this puck. I know I've got a switch here and it's turned off but I didn't want the pump to run for long periods um, with full load on. 54.9 right, Now I'm going to do something that I call closing the circle. I'm going to carry out one more set of tests after this gallium arsenide lens to prove that the laser is still working consistently on its own. Well doing 43 of these power tests, trust me, it's a very very tedious exercise. Um, but we've got some very interesting results on this piece of paper. So I need to put them into a nice tidy form for you guys to examine and then we'll talk about the results. Well, here's the fruits from three hours worth of boring work. But I think it was worth it because when we look at these results, we shall find there's some interesting data in here. The first thing to look at is the yellow highlighted numbers. Now, these are the basic power before the lens. So what I did was to make sure that I encompassed all these tests in sequential order as you see them by going back and checking the power between each test to make sure that the power was actually stable. Now if we take a look at the little note at the end you'll see that over the three hour test we only had 1.6 watts variation which is pretty good considering the manufacturer claims the tube stability will be within 10 percent. So in fact what we're finding is we were getting 62 watts roughly with a plus or minus 1.3% variation. Comfortably within spec and stable enough to say that yes we can trust these results for each one of these lenses. Now as I mentioned to you before because of the way in which the doohickey works and we do some little calculations we could get 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 variation and so these results are not absolute but in relative terms you can compare these sets of data. Okay, so let's go and take a quick look through at, first of all, this PDV meniscus lens, which is the Chinese brown lens. And then we've got the Chinese brown lens, which was a Plano convex. Now, both of those are sitting there at about, what's that one, 97% and 96%. They're not quite as high as we were led to believe we might get at 99%, but you know, they're practical results that we've got here and they're reasonable. You know, I mean, you, if you're going to use this lens as a cutting lens, then 2% uh, in 100 watts, you're not going to notice that when you're cutting. Okay, so these are performing reasonably well. The thing that was a big disappointment to me was the American CDV lens, because when I tested that, it came out at 92% which is way off the mark. Great as a dotting lens but not exactly staggering for cutting. When I got to the end of these results I was a little bit concerned that maybe I'd done something wrong.
because this result was so far away from everything else that what I did, let's jump across to right to the end here. So I pulled an, a brand new untouched by human hand lens out of its paper and tested that. And comparatively, it came up to 95.7%, 96%. So that was beginning to be in the same ballpark as the other two lenses that I tested. Okay, so maybe this was a bit dodgy, this lens. I had used it before, and when I checked, there were one or two slight smears on the underside. So I cleaned those smears off, and when I tested this particular lens again, it came up from 91.9 to around about 94.5%. So again, an improvement and getting close to where the brand new one was. So I'm having to suspect that there was a slight problem with that lens, the cleanliness of that lens. But it does show you how important it is to keep the lens absolutely spotlessly clean. We then went on to this rather expensive Plano convex lens. Hmm. In fact, if anything, it's worse than the average of everything else that we've seen, which is zinc selenide. You know, we've got 97% here, 96% here, 96% here, and 95% here. So it's, it's certainly not staggeringly better, as its price might suggest. The big surprise in all of this testing came when we looked at this gallium arsenide lens and as I pointed out to you it was incredibly shiny it was also incredibly poor at transmitting light in its uncoated state but as soon as they put that fantastic shiny coating on look what's happened it's gone up to 98 and a half percent now that's not very far off the 99 percent that we're expecting for the zinc selenide lenses in terms of a lens, this gallium arsenide for cutting is actually something we should look at very, very carefully. As I said, the other advantage of gallium arsenide is that you can use this for very high powers. You know, if you've got a 150 or 200 watt machine, this is a great lens for you. Whereas you'd have to pay more for a decent zinc selenide lens. Probably this Plano convex lens here from two from 2.6 is probably capable of going up to 150 watts and beyond but I don't know that but if you're going up to 150 watts beyond and you're losing 5% hmm I think if I had a choice it would be the gallium arsenide now the only disadvantage of having gallium arsenide as I said is it does not transmit visible light so if you have a beam combiner you might be a little bit disappointed now, the one thing you will note about the tests that I did, there was no lens tube to get in the way. Any risk of absorbing power or reflections, we went straight through the lens itself. So this is, as far as I'm concerned, untainted data. It might not be absolutely accurate, but in relative terms, it gives you a pretty good idea what these lenses are doing. Now, what I've got to point out is that it is the lenses that I have in my hand. These are new lenses, but that does not mean to say that every lens will be exactly the same. So I've got to be very careful because it's a very small sample. Now I did warn you this was likely to be a three part session and the next session is likely to be a lot, lot longer because what we're trying to establish next time is not only what the effect of this power is through each lens, but of course, each lens has got its own focus power convergent problem. And when we're converging the power onto the surface of the work, if all the power is not focused into one particular spot, then we're not maximizing the power through the lens. So the next session will be all about trying to work out just how efficiently we can get these lenses to cut. Thanks for your time and I'll catch you in the next session.